This is Flotilla Friday for February 4th, 2022. Uh, welcome all. Uh, I feel like I've been busy on other stuff this week, so I haven't really even, I have set up even less thought about what we should talk about uh, this week. Not that that ever, and, and the other thing, by the way, I'm, I'm going to drop off at 10. Um, me too, so maybe, <laughs> maybe that's the pattern for today. We can keep it open, but yeah, I have to go at the same time. Me too. Well, I have, I've been thinking about something relative to the tapestry that I'd love to talk to people about and get their feedback on if people are interested. Um, I know you guys are already aware of the X and Y, so I'm working on Z, like what are those categories, which it translates into what kinds of things do we want to see in the tapestry? So I would love to um, just run that by everybody and see what they think at some point. That's awesome. Let's do it. Well, after Wendy shares about the tapestry, um, I'd like to give a brief update on the encyclopedic table. I've been working on that in terms of like the design. And then also um, I'm going to be planning a workshop and wanted to maybe pass by with you guys what would be the best way to set up a like ontology um, testing experiment. So like in Kiko Lab, Lauren had us do a lot of like card sorting activities where it'd be like, all right, like there's a bunch of cards here and there's a bunch of categories and like we're all going to like swarm and like move things around. And so um, I was thinking of designing an experiment kind of like that, which would test the hypothesis of like, are these the right categories? And so it's very open ended, but um, I want to design something that's not going to like yeah, it's basically like experiment design, like making sure it's not um, uh, constraining people, but also not being too open where it's not useful. I, I wish I had for ontologies is that you is that it, it would be cool if you could use different people's ontologies as kind of different overlays. You know, I want to see Vincent's categories. I want to see Pete's categories. I want to see Wendy's categories. And, and then I think, so, and the other thing about ontologies is maybe you're not looking for the best ones, you're looking for any that are really bad, um, and you just want to prune those out. The ones that don't make, you know, that make sense to one person, but not anybody else. But I think mm. the, the weird thing about categories is you don't really want a category that everybody understands. You want a category that many people understand, but maybe some people won't. Right. So this would be to basically um make sure that this category system which is very useful for me and is something that i've been using for a while and developed over a, a like a large stretch of time is also useful for at least other people so that it can be something that multiple people are are using and contributing to but it is just one set so you know you could also use um the tapestry might use the um the Barbara Mark Hubbard wheel of co-creation sectors and someone else might use the SDGs. This is another category system which needs to be user tested, but the the only like other unique thing about this one that I'm working on is that each one of these categories like has to be connected to um, other categories in other ontologies. So there's no category in here that isn't connected to at least one other category in another ontology. And there's no category in another ontology that is not represented here. All right, so you're trying to create a universal kind not of. Not a universal, just a always interoperable. Um, <laughs> but, so yeah. yeah, it's like, because if any, it, there can be a translation between any of the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Because that's slightly I, different. It depends on how you're going to use it. Right. If it just sits in the background as something interoperable, that's different. And I don't think you mean to just do that. Right. But that would be different than somebody actually trying to use it to categorize something. So that's something to consider. It might be two parts of the workshop. Right. Um, or you might want to just focus on the front facing version of it where people are interacting with it, 
which case I have a suggestion, but it's on Pete, you wanted to say something. So, so there's usability testing and then there's interoperability testing or usability design and interoperability design. Yeah, yeah, so, right. And, those and are those the, are the really cool thing about Vincent. I, you, you're doing a really good job at both. Um, you've got a very useful um, ontology and you're also super good at interoperability. It's, it's hard to do that. Thanks, yeah, so yeah. maybe focusing on one or the other for the workshop, and it sounds like you are trying to do the usability side of it, right? Do people find it useful? Does it make sense to them? Um, because if people aren't categorizing things when they come to add something to Trove in a way that then can be interoperable, because what they mean by, you know, what they were thinking when they put it in this category is not really what it maps to when it goes to the other things, then maybe that's, you know, something that, um, that and then maybe that's part of what can be worked in in terms of a test if it, if it were me i would a lot of the workshops i do if you present people categories and this isn't for tech this is just priming for people's minds if you present them with something they'll try and think of things that fit into the category in which case you're not really testing it in my opinion if you want to come up with um say kind of like we're doing for the tapestry where i'm saying you know Hey, what's your, where is your expertise or where is your, where are your interests? And then see if it fits, right? Then see if people go, oh, wait, this doesn't fit anywhere. This doesn't make sense. Or if, you know, it's coming at it from that direction that I think um, really, really highlights the, if people feel like the words mean something to them or don't mean something to them. And that's what I think you're really after is the, if it all fits fine, you're not going to learn anything, right? You know what I'm saying? If, yeah. you, if it's when it doesn't fit right. that you go, oh, there's a hole, or oh, this word doesn't mean what I think it means to every to enough people, or. Yeah. yeah, so like, I think one of the experiments, it could be like, here, everyone gets two articles, right? Like a random set of articles. And then it's like, okay, if you had to add this into one, which one would it be? If you had to add it into multiple, which multiple would it be? And then you can see the map and you could see no one added anything into here or here. And what I would probably want to do, I don't know if this is like framing it too much, is like pick an article that I think fits in each one of the categories and then see the distribution of like if it's like a very solid distribution or if like they're, they get concentrated in certain categories. Um, so that's like one experiment design that I was thinking about, but it could also be like, it could, um, Wendy, we could do a version of it with the tapestry where it's like, okay, everyone like share um, one offer and then see how people categorize them. So there's different, yeah, there's different ways of doing it. And I, each experiment would kind of give you some slightly different information, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. And I bet we could come up with a way to design it that flows pretty quickly for people. And then we could just repeat it a couple times and you'd get that those different angles on it without it being too mentally taxing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea, Vincent, to, to test it out that way. Um, we could also um, preset it. Like I've been meaning to do this with your, with your, um, with all the different sets that you've already curated and do a little research on which ones already had, like I remember one you sent me, which didn't, was brand new. Like they hadn't even tested the set yet that they were proposing, right? right. And so there's a different level of, you know, to me, um, we may wanna look at this, do a little research, do the, do the 10 of the 27 that are really solid sets and make sure those 10 are really interoperable because those are gonna be the ones that most other people are gonna be interested in using too. The one, ones that are out there for a while, ones that people are already familiar with, SDGs, right? Things like that. Whereas these other ones that are up and coming, you know, we can be curious about, maybe they have um, offered up some extra categories. So we may wanna look at it that way too and frame it a little bit for people um, simply by the way we construct the workshop um, and I'm saying we, cause I'm more than happy, you know, I'll help you with this. I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Wendy. Um, yeah, exactly. And, um, right now, obviously, um, this is kind of, 
the the hard part about the interoperability and bill your question of like how to add new categories is if information is already tagged with a category if a new category is added there needs to be a process of like potentially recategorizing information that other people have tagged in the past and so i assume the the edits would be this category is getting split into two or two are getting merged or a whole new one is being added in the whole new one being added that's easy because you just add the new one and then people can start adding information to it the other two would require like making a workflow that would look at all the past data that's tagged with that thing and then like figuring out how to parse it and and my guess is by creating this you're trying to avoid that too much of that in the future can i say a couple of words okay so my experience with the tapestry although you made it really, really easy, I found it a little bit of a challenge, which I really enjoyed because it made me reflect again on things, my own experience and stuff like that and how it might be communicated or written out. Um, so I really enjoyed that and I found it valuable. So I think when you say, oh, it'll just be easy for people to do blah, blah, blah. It's like, if it's really, really easy, then like you said, Wendy, well, we're really not doing anything now because we don't want it to be that easy. We want to be challenged. I mean, that for me, that's what I want because then we may actually come up with something new rather than going, oh yeah, that's just like, a, I don't know, a cooking thing. You know, even though I wasn't thinking of cooking. And the other thing I wanted to say, Vincent, the, the thing that struck me both you and tapestry is like, and Pete, what you said about ontologies, I mean, these kinds of things are like, it's like a, a it's a thing or it's a, like, it's like a kind of a technology that we use to, because it helps solve a problem or set of problems. I mean, I'm just starting to read about science from you know, indigenous perspectives. And I got to tell you, this is not like the chemistry, history of chemistry I learned when I was a graduate student. So there, I mean, and I think we just have to be clear that there is not going to be one ontology. These things are grounded in a context that actually supports a certain aim, goal, culture, whatever. You know, or just, you know, today's meeting is going to be like, you know, crazy talk, whatever. So I think it's really, you know, expecting interoperability everywhere is, I don't know about that, because you're just going to run into things where we're just not going to talk about that. Well, my joke is I'm married to an anthropologist. So I see the setting sun, you know, I'm thinking physics. Well, she's not. It's the same sunset. We're holding hands. It's great, but you know, it's at some at some intellectual kind of level. It's not not exactly the same thing. So, so instead of universality, you really want interoperability. You want to be able. Yeah, to... but the, so the question for me is how how do you know it when you have it? Interoperability, or yeah, th this is the thing that's always come up with computer systems. I've had guys they tell me it's going to be interoperable, you know, and I'm the quality control guy. I'm like, great, you know, how are you going to measure that? You got a thermometer for that thing? I mean, I'm a chemist, right? If you don't have a thermometer, what are you talking about? It's interoperable. How did you know? I mean, that's the question. I think when you're going to claim it's interoperable, you have to, I, you know, because of the following, you know, demonstrable evidence, facts, something, some kind yeah. of a measure. Yeah. So I, I think kind of the way that works, if, if to take your, your sunset um, uh, uh, experience and, and kind of tease into it a little bit, I think you want to be able to, for, for the participants in the interoperation, you want uh, you want to look at the same thing and then you know look at it one way and look at it another way and then have those two people talk to each other. Okay, you're seeing you know wavelengths of light, blah blah blah. I'm seeing you know an emotional experience or whatever. Um, and 
there, there are people who like um, maybe aren't fluent in a language, but can at least kind of kind of follow along. So, you know, if somebody says, okay, well, what I see when I'm looking at a sunset and it's, they start going through the, the atmospheric phenomenon and stuff like that, a person who's not necessarily versed in science, but can at least kind of follow along says, I think, I think we're looking at the same thing. I think you're talking about the same things that I see. And, you know, and, and maybe some of the, like this sunset is different from the last sunset because, you know, you captured some of that in your explanation of it and vice versa, right? Um, so if you can do the translation between two, um, two ontologies or two whatevers, and then have uh, bridge people, um, people who are a little, at least a little bit bilingual, like um, it actually kind of like translation, right? You know, um, uh, I can't read Spanish, but I can kind of glance through something and get the gist of something in Spanish or French or whatever. And I can, I could kind of pick up, you know, you, you totally missed the reference to the lion that we saw, right? It's just not in the text here. Um, or I could look over and go, yeah, it looks like I, I can't tell exactly that it's, you know, exactly accurate for the English one, but I think it captures everything. So that cross-checking and doing the translation and then cross-checking is, is somewhere in how, how does that work? That's kind of a thermometer. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the people have to agree. I mean, this is, well, this is a little yeah. far-fetched, but, you know, the reason we have proofs in mathematics, you are proof in mathematics, you know, it's not just, it happens because you're actually, other people agree, it's a proof. Yeah. It's not yeah, like, it's, it it's like, it's a human thing. We actually, yeah, I'll go with you. With You know, I like, you know, whatever. But we both believe the equal sign is like a cruel master. <laughs> well, with words it is, because words are just complicated airflow. But... Um... <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> semiotics to the we're done now sound that's it um oh, so but yeah, I, I, go ahead okay. wendy and then i want to answer bill's question after that okay yeah i'm, I'm talking the same thing for me um so we're staying on topic the to me bill this is so interesting because to me it's a shift in mindset a bit from this feeling like everything has to be a one-to-one -one relationship like this leads to that and, and that, that's what I hear too, when we're talking about interoperability, perfect interoperability means this thing maps to this, this thing maps to this. And, and it's the same always, and life isn't like that. And that's not the way we think about things. And your example of a sunset is a perfect example um, to me too. And what I love about thinking about the tapestry more, and the reason why I keep getting excited about it is because I think it allows us to say, see the sunset, the sunset becomes a resource and one person puts it in one place and another person puts it in another place. So one way we could look at that is, is completely miss the fact that this, this resource is in two places. Cause right now the, the sunset is mapped to physics here and it's mapped to um, paintings here, right? Or beautiful artistry here. However, if we, if, if we, if I can get the tapestry to work the way I'm hoping it will in my head, then you can also look at each individual resource, right? And see the multiple places in which it's mapped, right? So now it's not about trying to get it in the right place. There's no one right place for this resource. Ta-da, like we can put it, it's okay to have it be in 16 different places. And then how interesting is it when we take a look at it and say, um, wow, this resource is being that is has value in all these different ways. And then as individuals, we can look at that and say, well, I've always thought about it as a physics thing. And I'd love to have more conversation with people who think of it like a physics thing. Or conversely, I always think about it as a physics thing. And I would love to understand it better from the perspective of people who see it from an, as artistry. And so um, to me, that's that's the juicy stuff. And we're not there because generally we categorize in a one-to-one -one relationship. So from my perspective, I'm hoping to provide categorization that allows people to just place it where it makes sense to them, but it isn't asking. It, it, it most definitely is not asking them to pick the right place. Yeah, well, that, I think, well, yeah, that's perfect. I will we'll say the one thing that your little tapestry, the interesting thing, most, inter one of the more interesting things for me was you have those set of definitions though, that, you know, that you got. And I read the thing on science seven times and I'm like, I don't know about that one. 
I really do not know about that one at all. As it, I'm like, uh, but I, but I have an idea what the word science means to me. So, you know, I, but I have this definition. It's really very peculiar. I thought. I, yeah, it is. And it actually comes right from, I didn't make it up. It comes from. No, I know. I, read, I, I went to, I looked it up and I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's, and I infrastructure <laughs> threw me too, because when I started thinking about technology, I'm like, where does technology in like, I ended up putting some of my stuff in, into in infrastructure, right? It's so in that case, it's almost like too big an umbrella, right? I kind of want to, but maybe that's the, maybe that's the joy of it, right? Maybe that's, that's. Well, yeah, this, no, I think you're right. I think the idea, the idea about you're thinking, here's the one thing for me, you, you're like pushing back, you know, we just can't have your people need to open up to the fact that there's not one-to-one. I mean, you must be talking to different people than I'm talking to because I'm living in a world where nothing's one to one, pretty much as far as I can determine. Now I know I'm an outlier from the general, a lot of general thinking because you know I just I don't I can't. But it seems like the more natural thing is not to expect it. Is not to expect lineups. When Pete, you were talking about translation, this has always confused me. I mean, I learned French in high school. So there's a phrase in French, like when you get something done, you want to bring it out, you know, and you go, voila, there it is. I asked somebody who's a native Spanish speaker, I said, what's the term for that in Spanish? They're like, mm -mm. we don't have a one word term for that. We don't have a one word term for that in English. It's like, so there are things that are like, you know, and it's, it's so interesting to me. And I think we might expect this in this kind of, you know, even what we build in uh, tapestry or in trove, there's going to be idioms that are available in one area, community kind of activity that may not be directly available in another, at least not as concisely, which would be like, cool. And the latest thing I learned, because Pete brought this up the other day about, you know, talking about things as uh, pushing back against, you know, materialists, looking at everything as a resource. This is kind of our materialist, you know, liberal capitalist. Well, since I've been reading some other perspectives, I was just thinking about, you know, the tree outside my window here. It's actually a, a companion. Maybe I should think about it as my companion. While I'm living in this house rather than you know just this tree which is a you know a different way of looking at things and as resources anyway I think it's tremendous and I've had a lot of Vincent I feel like I have to go figure out what what it would feel like to actually stick Bill Anderson more into trove but <laughs> it seems daunting to me <laughs> Well, see, that's the balance between, yeah, it being easy or challenging, but I don't, I, I was trying to like sketch out what I think we're getting at here. Um, and kind of how I see it is like, you can have a, um, a tag, let's just say this is a tag. So let's say circle is an object and this square is like a tag, right? So you can have a circle is tagged, like a book is tagged with sustainability. And so the first level, this top part is like inferred relationship. So, right, you're not actually letting people decide what this relationship is. You're saying if you're tagging this with sustainability, it means it's about or it's related to. Um, then the next like level down is more of like a knowledge graph where you're saying, okay, this book, and then you get to actually define and say this book, right? Um, critiques sustainability. So now there's a relationship type, which is not fixed. Whereas here, this is simplifying it because all you have to do is tag this, whereas this you have to put in the relationship type. And then the other way to do it, which is the most unstructured, is actually 
everything is just an object and then you define that this is a a book and this one is a, a tag and then you get to choose what the connection type is too. So in the tapestry, you're saying like you're creating a, a response and then these relationship types, there's only, there's three sets. You can say, this is a need, um, this is an offer or this is a suggestion, right? So you can kind of, there's three options for the relationship type. Whereas like um, in Trove, when you're tagging a book with like the high level network, like one of these, the relationship is fixed. And so it's kind of like you're constraining a variable. You're saying like, we're not going to, everything is how um, is related to or about, right? So you're constraining that variable. And so what I think this is trying to do is actually not interoperability. It's um, to make it easier to translate. And it's only when the context is fixed. So if there's a project database, and these projects are related to this topic, then you can translate that topic database into this system if it's using the SDGs, but the relationship type is the same. Yeah, and this is exactly where I've been thinking, Vincent, and I actually realized that taking doing it by needs and offers and suggestions was actually not helping. So what ended up, what I've been thinking about is, is as we put in a piece, an interest, uh, an, an area of expertise, um, a resource, what I started thinking about is the relationship of the person to the thing that they were putting in and taking out um, needs and taking out, they're basically all offers. It all becomes offers, right? I'm trying to take out those extra layers and just be like, here's what I am bringing forward. This is what I have to offer to this community. And however anybody wants to phrase it that way, it could be, I have a job offer, a job, you know what I mean? Like, right. But putting it as, as framing it as these things I offer. So I'm going to show, let me share my screen and I am on the wrong tab. So hold on one sec. Because um, I think this gets at the questions too. Uh, yeah. So I literally was just like writing it out. I crossed out, right? We were like relationships, right? And here's, so I had gone, here's interest, right? We've got that interest, expertise, artifacts, which is a word that Vince and I came up with, or actually that he uses in Trove, but I kind of like resources better. I keep, I keep stumbling over artifacts. And then I realized there's others. There's a story. We keep talking about stories. And then I, I felt too, there's questions that should be in each, in each cell or each segment as well. Um, and then we had also talked about like sources of funding or things like that. So um, or other sources of like other types of capital we had talked about too. So I'm still playing around with all this, but as I started talking about, okay, well, what would be the relationship with interest? Right. And I realized I, what I'm really talking about is what is my relationship with my interest in this particular topic? Right. So I started writing it out as a question. I wrote it out as a sentence. Cause I know Vincent's also going in that direction. Like every answer within a cell could be written out as a sentence. So I'm trying to think of it that way and the way I'm phrasing the dropdown for people to select. So let's say you have an interest in gardening and you're willing to throw that out. Um, then being able to say, my interest in gardening is like a mild curiosity, right? Or it's an occasional hobby, which I spelled wrong, or it's a true excitement for me or it's a lifelong pursuit for me. So I'm trying to come up with about four for each um, and figure out that relationship. And I'm finding that this, it has a lot of richness to it and helps people if they want to, to me, this would be like a tiered, a tiered discernment, right? They could just put in the interest. You don't have to necessarily put a relationship. Although from a data perspective, we would really like that relationship because it's going to enable a lot of other things, 
but I'm, I'm to me, this, not everyone's going to want to go to that level, but if we can encourage them to, then this would be like the next thing to kind of highlight for people. So like, what kind of interest do you have? What level of expertise do you have? What type of artifact is it, right? What's your relationship to it? So this is where I'm playing. If anybody has feedback, I'd love it. I don't know if you see in chat, Michael asks, is this a shared doc? And when you're muted. Hadn't seen that. Thank you. I will share it. You don't mind, Vincent, right? No, more the merrier. Not, not even so much that I wanted to like start typing, but it's just gonna, you know. You so can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Here it comes. You're all seeing what I'm doing anyway. The doc is basically, yeah, we're playing on the, the actual like data structure for a response within the tapestry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I was showing you, we're talking about the layers. Yeah, I'll I'll put it over just so it's a little because it's gotten big anyway. Just gonna move it over so that people can find it a little more easily. There you go. Um, you know, one one thing that that came up for me, and I'm sorry, I I feel. Like a little bad piping up just because something might have come up before I got here. But um, when you were talking about artifacts and resources, mm -hmm. um, the distinction, I don't know if we want to draw it to me, is like, you know, there's, there's a, a remnant quality to artifacts that, you know, the, the archival vibe of that which i mean i think is a really great thing and it's definitely um more maybe a bit more of an emphasis um in in my work than than in other you know players in this um, this space whereas resources to me is really alive and and you know like where do we go? I mean, not not that things can't be both artifacts and resources. I just wanted to throw that out just to see if it, you know, stimulated an idea of of defining them as different things or using them one as a tag on the other. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not I'm not sure where that leads, but um, but I do get from resources and on trove like, you know we're engaged in an activity, um, these people, organizations, you know, funding sources that this is, this is a link to something that's alive and changing as opposed to the artifact being something that's not, not necessarily frozen in the past, but, you know, a reference point, um, a, 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 a kernel of information that you want to be able to go back to and organize and make sure people can find. Throwing that out there, I hope hopefully not not making more of a mess. No, that's yeah. Thank you because um, what I hear you saying is that an artifact feels more like something that will stand the test of time, and resource has more of a feeling of something alive and active and current. Yeah, and I, and I mean, you know, that alive, active, and current thing you could refer to as an artifact, you know, like the, you know, the minutes of the meeting. So, you know, that, that artifact is more stands the test of time. It's not going to be probably changing a whole lot now. 
whereas a resource could be so much more and so much more, um, you know, vibrant and, and as you say, changing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me too, when I think about going into a library, there's a resource room. Do you know what I mean? Like to me, it's a word that Ha, that is more common in our language, but then again, right? It's 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 more common in our language to refer to a to refer to a collection of things that could be of use to you, <laughs> versus a um, versus a museum artifact. So right, though I, I mean, mean that's why it's interesting. Thanks, but... I mean the library thing is to me a library is is a collection of artifacts. You know, the books, the words on the pages of the books aren't gonna change, um, but the library itself is a resource and the interactions you have with, you know, in an existing brick and mortar library, the, the resources that you have in um, different, you know, collections of artifacts or people who know those artifacts in a specific way, whose expertise you want to tap, um, or, you know, kind of multimedia assets that change. Um, you know, those are, yeah. I yeah, I mean, bit, but th those you're are, making you're making the argument to me to lean towards the term resource, especially for something like the tapestry where it's, we're trying to offer up things that are gonna be um, actively used, you know, by the, by the community. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would think in, in what you're doing, resources seems like a more inviting term. Maybe. I mean, it yeah, seems yeah. right. It, it, to me, like resources on Trove, seem right and only seem a little odd to me when they're something static and archival and you know not that those things aren't resources but yeah. they're um you know when, when they're just like an object uh unchanging object it seems a little like a mismatch of terms Mm -hmm. And like, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, maybe artifacts are a subset of resources that conjure mm -hmm. up a different notion of what you'll get than resource as a whole, which seems more like, here's where I'm going to find, you know, um, fungible help. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that last part that you said, that's how I was thinking about it was like, capital is a resource. Right. Um, an artifact right. is a specific type of resource, which is like, I think what Wendy, the context of artifact was like to describe like a project or something that had been completed that's in like the later stages of like, it's out in the world. It's like something that you can use. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I think the reason why I had suggested artifact was because it's a more specific term than resource and resource could technically be applied towards a lot of these other categories. Like, I think, <clears throat> I think it would be helpful to say like, what are the examples of what would be within this category to actually define it, right? So the context, like what, like, <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking like in this category would be like project, Wendy, would this be like projects and groups or would it be like projects and like um, tools and stuff that people can use? That's a great question. What would people like to see in the tapestry? If you were, you can think of it two ways, right? So forget my list for a second. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, forget my list for a second and just go, I think, I think we all kind of, kind of agree. I'd want to share my expertise. I want to share my interests. I think that makes sense to a lot of people, but what else, what else would you like to tell about yourself to a group? What else would you like to share that might be of value to other people? And then we can figure out later how, how to put it into categories, but like, what is it? What's the kinds of things that you would want to share with other people? And I'll just take, I'm going to take notes on the side if people want to just throw stuff out. 
Um, if I could, I yeah. don't mean to. Oh, sorry, you had your hand up. Yeah. From the direction of the conversation. But I'm watching and I'm kind of going, huh, I have a different problem. I'll personalize it. I've talked to each one of you once on the phone. Um, maybe one or two of you twice. I don't think so, though. And I'm kind of going, aha, I want to help Wendy with Figma. Stacy has made an offer to you know, talk and, and kind of explore ideas. Um, Pete and I could talk for three more years and, and not you know, end the conversation um, and, and still be enthralled. Um, Bill, same way. Vincent probably and Michael, the same way. Um, and I'm trying to figure out all right, where do I spend my time? Because this is not in terms of finding people. It's like, okay, I've found people. What do I do next? And I, you know, I, I, I think the work that Vincent and, and Wendy you're doing, and it, it, it thrills me. I'm really interested in it. And I can see, you know, the value of, of you know the introductions but what do we do after the introductions that's sort of where i'm at you know i found interesting people how do i collaborate with them how do i go to the next step um and and you know i sorry i'm gonna have to leave in about seven minutes maybe even yeah about seven minutes but um i just wanted to as a sort of infrequent member of this group, bring this up uh, because it's kind of been a silent question. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking for help to articulate that and to kind of say, aha, you know, each one of you is an incredible, valuable person who I'd love to spend more time with. How do I do that? And, you know, certainly, listening is contributing in a way and i'm happy to listen here i don't want to derail you know the focus that you have but but thank you for listening to that and i don't i don't need an answer um in in, in the in the present time but i want you to know personally boy i'm really looking to forward to our next phone call together our next one-on-one -on -one. and and you know it's 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 not you, it's me, um, who can't figure out how to say, aha, how do I have this mm, plan or, you know, go deeper on some interests? And it's not actually looking at trove or um, tapestry that I think I'm going to find more about Vincent or Wendy or, or Bill. Um, and um, I, I love having questions that I don't have answers for. I'm so sorry that I don't have a design framework for, okay, what's going to connect um, Michael and I together in a way that we're actually going to spend time together that's productive for us both. Um, and I, I think, you know, the introductions are great. And, and, you know, there's a world out there besides us. I'd love for them to get together and, and do these things. But I ask myself, you know, do I need a artifact in some way that says, hey, Mark, you haven't called Stacy in three weeks. Call Stacy. Um, anyway, um, I'll be here for another five minutes. <laughs> If you'll forgive my uh, forgive my interruption into I love your interruption. Thank you, because you also had your hand up. So I'm glad you just jumped in um, as I started running away with with my own train of thought. No, I think I wrote down your questions. I think that's exactly the kind of thing that's extremely helpful to think about, because what I do care about most um, is how in the end this being a tool for connection and collaboration. It's it, you know if it's not if it's not facilitating that next step for people, then 
then I'm not on the right track and I want to scrap it and I want to change it and I want to do something else with it because that to me, it can't, it can't just be a static, another piece of information that people have to figure out and absorb. And like, no one needs any more of that. We have enough of that. Right. And so that's what I hear inherent in your questions is how does it help us make more connections or facilitate a collaboration or move the conversation forward or right. How does it do that? And if it's not doing that, let's look at that again. Um, in my mind, I'm seeing Mark to use your example and see if this resonates with other people right now, we come to these meetings and we learn a little bit about each other. What if you found out that surprise, surprise, you and Bill shared interests in 10 different spaces and you'd only ever been talking about one of them, that would make a prior, might prioritize for you, oh, the next person I really need to talk to is Bill. There's so much there um, that we share. That could be a potential, right? It could be that there's some question that's really burgeoning for you in a particular area. You all of a sudden became super curious about NFTs and how they work. And you know, you have your own little nugget of information about it, but you really wanna understand more. Well, it turns out that in your communities, there's, 25 people you didn't even know who are all interested in working in that space. Anyway, I'm just throwing out potential um, ideas for how it could help facilitate quicker connection. Then the actual connection needs to come from the people, right? It, it's, it can't, right? You're still going to do what you would have done before is reach out to people. But now you may reach out and go, hey, are the, to 10 people and say, hey, is anybody interested in having this conversation? And it can be you know, a conversation of 10 people, instead of the time it takes to meet each one of those people individually, discover that each one of them is interested in that thing, then get a wrap background and go, hey, maybe we could have a meeting might take months instead of weeks. I, I understand. And I think that, you know, this is a incredible step for initial connections. Um, I'm going to take Bill for an example. I, I have the sense that Bill has um, read about Bateson and epistemology and cybernetics, and that there are, you know, besides any other interest in birding, you know, anything at random, um, you know, Citroens, um, 50s cars, um, what have you, that the cybernetics history and how do you apply cybernetics in the um, in an unobtrusive way of designing systems for people that work I, I think we can go there Bill tell me if I'm right or wrong um, and, and spend a heck of a lot of time there without you know having to know about the 50s cars or the you know, eco sustainability side of that. And I'm just trying to figure out, huh, I have, a, you know, personally, a, you know, one more minute. <laughs> and how do I express this, this need um, so that it somehow gets heard, but, you know, I don't find it in, you know, Trover Tapestry. Um, it's how do I go to the next level? And, you know, Figma, boy, I, I have that, you know, Wendy on, on a, you know, you know I'll, I'll write it, you know, in, on the whiteboard. And it's like, yeah, I really want to pick up Figma. And I know Wendy wants to work with Figma. And I haven't done anything for, I don't know how many months that we've, we've talked about it. And um, I see Bill on his French cars. <laughs> in the chat. I'm uh, sorry to have to go. I would love to stay longer. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please go back to your regular scheduled um, stuff. But um, uh, just thanks for listening, because I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. And, and I hope you know, all of you, that if I had, if I didn't have a job, I would be talking to you, if you let me, an hour each today. Bye bye. Thanks, Mark. I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, he makes a great point. You know, it's something definitely that um, 
that it is what I'm trying to do, you know, for sure. It's the, it's the motivator for me. Does it feel to you guys like it's different steps or like how I've thought about it is like, okay, we need a directory of projects so that people could just find it like, oh, this is a project. But then like, then you find a directory of projects and there's no contact email and you're like, well, great. Now I don't do anything. So it's like, okay, yeah, you need to have the directory. And then you also need to have the way to contact someone. But then, then the next what Mark is saying is like one step further in my opinion of like, okay, you actually have someone's contact, you know the project, but now it's like, what out of the realm of everything can, is there enough alignment that is, that we should be talking about, which is like, you know, um, it seems like a related, but another question, I'm curious if you guys feel the same way. Yes. Well, the thing that came up for me when you're saying is like, okay, I found a project, you know, but I can't find the Ghostbusters phone number. So we're done here. But then it says at the bottom, who are you going to call? It's got a number. Terrific. Now I'm interested. There's the project. Here's who I have to call. Now it's like, are you going to do that, Bill? Or are you just going to pick up a book? I mean, or look at this, you know, I have a tendency, my wife might say, you know, I have the squirrel syndrome. Oh, that's interesting over there. So, um, so there is a, you know, there's a kind of like, a, you know, leading horses to water and then like, or from the Zen things, you know, the Zen teacher thing, you know, selling water by the riverside, whatever, you know. Um, uh, I think that what, I don't know, I think, well, I've said this before, but I've been reading a lot of history. This is a this is a challenge for the 21st century for humanity is how to make these kinds of connections in a way that things happened in like the 1820s and 30s for the world. I mean, literally the 1920s was just like a wrap up or like, we're just going to take, you know, capitalism to the, to the extreme, but now we're in another situation where it's like, whoa, that's not working <laughs> as expected. So I think we're in kind of growing pains. This is exactly what, you know, so I think you're all doing fantastic. I mean, I just don't have as much energy as I had when I was 35. So, I mean, literally, so. <clears throat> Ten o'clock, folks. It's been great. Thank you all That's so much. Nice. Before before we sign off, can I add one thing? <laughs> Please. Um, I'm, I put, I put one thing in the chat, but um, in what Mark's saying and what what we've been talking about a lot, um, I I do feel like there is a place for, um, and, and this is what interests me and like I want to have and want to do um, and, you know, find a way to interlock with, with um, you know, the internet archive on the one end and the, um, you know, I, I would put, Trove and its and its desire to foment action at kind of the other end of like you know Trove is a resource of resources. Um, the Internet Archive is is a resource of artifacts. You know, I mean, you don't go to the Internet Archive to like see what's happening. You go to see what happened, and you know. And in the, in the space between and the, and the desire to take the stuff in the archive and A, add to it and B, curate it, um, there is really, really fertile ground for connection 
that then leads to action, even though you're, you're dealing with inactive stuff. I mean, that seems like the space in which you discover, oh, you know, I'm into this kind of activity and that kind of activity and this kind of activity. And when I look at this object, I see the, the tagging and the, and the, who did the tagging and, you know, you get, you, you can kind of work at this, this amorphous space from both ends, you know, trove and, and, and tapestry and massive wiki, you know, and, and things, you know, spin off and, and Catabot, you know, kind of spin off these like, static artifacts, which can be grouped in all different ways. And like, that's the stuff that, you know, I almost feel like it's, it, you know, I, I was gonna say, I wanna put blinders on, but it's, it's decidedly not blind. It's decidedly open to things that go on external to it. But, you know, I don't, you know, I want to I want to find a way to work in that area, um, and not be either duplicating what the Internet Archive is doing. God help us, um, and and not be trying to do what you know you guys are doing. Um, it's just like object curation as soil for <laughs> the growth that's happening um, elsewhere. I don't know if that's too vague, but um, you know that that that's that's what I want to contribute. So yeah. You contribute too. Thanks, Michael. Good for now. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Michael would love to continue the thread. Mm -hmm. All right. See all cool. you nodes and edges around the internet. Bye, <laughs> 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 <Hi>, everyone. <laughs> Stay edgy. <laughs>